Hello, everyone. Um, happy International World Voice Day. Uh, my name is Lindsay Sepsi, um, and I am really excited and honored to be here today to present to you on uh, dysphonia on behalf of Dysphonia International. Okay, so as a slight introduction, um, my name is Lindsay Sepsi, as I said prior. Um, I'm a speech language pathologist based in Ocean County, New Jersey where I practice at two different private practices, including uh, short therapy services, and then additionally, um, Neuro Rehab and Speech Healers, LLC. Um, I earned my graduate degree from Northeastern University, where I completed a voice uh, specialty externship at the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Infirmary in Boston. Um, I am deeply passionate about advocating and providing care to individuals with different types of dysphonia, which is the focus of my presentation this today. So a speech language pathologist, um, we have a plethora of different roles in different subspecialties. So those include um, speech sound disorders, augmentative alternative communication, fluency, cognition, hearing impairments, social pragmatics, swallowing, language disorders, and neurogenic communication disorders. But of course, our focus today is going to be on voice disorders. So overall, what is dysphonia? So the diagnosis of dysphonia is an overall uh, generalized term. It's a medical term referring to any voice disorder that is characterized by difficulty in producing sounds. And so these certain characteristics that might be more difficult might include vocal qualities that are weak, strained, rough, and it also can encompass changes with pitch or volume. Um, and so the onset of a voice disorder can result from one of the following, um, vocal fold overuse, vocal fold paralysis, uh, laryngitis, neurological conditions such as Parkinson's disease or spasmodic dysphonia, and psychological factors, including stress, anxiety, or muscle tension. And all of these can be sudden or they can be uh, slowly transpiring over time. Okay. so. Um, the theory I like to use when a patient comes in that I think is really um, easily comprehensible is called the power source filter theory. Um, and so it starts off with the power being your lungs. And so that power comes from the breath management. Um, I like the term breath management versus breath support as breath management is more what it sounds like. It's how you manage that breath. And so using that inspiration and expiration to power those vocal folds. So the power comes up in the vocal folds, which this right in here, um, and that power helps them to vibrate with more strength, producing a stronger sound quality. Um, and so then we have our source, which as I said, is our vocal folds. Um, and they are the tissues that live in your throat, which vibrate together using muscles to form sound. And then we have our filters. Um, and this is the structures that shape sound, including our teeth, our lips, our tongue, our hard palate, our soft palate, also known as the velum, our uvula and our upper gum ridge. So on this slide, you can see uh, the basic vocal anatomy. And so when we first start off with the anatomy, um, the most essential part of this is talking about the two tissues, the two vocal folds. And so they're two flat like structures that we have one on the right and one on the left. And so when you speak, they come together and produce sound. And when we breathe, they come apart. And so when we speak, as I said, they come together and they're gonna to vibrate together. So there's gonna be some type of collision force that happens. Um, we wanna avoid that collision force being too strong. As uh, we speak loudly, we run the risk of overworking these vocal folds. And that's where dysphonia uh, can come into effect, um, but also just overall that really keeps our voice nice and healthy by avoiding uh, this type of speaking. Okay. And so here you'll find um, an anatomy of the larynx provided by Dysphonia International. Um, and so a voice therapist will probably go a lot more into detail. This is a really great depiction of so many different uh, portions of the larynx. But um, especially in voice therapy, you'd go further into detail with this. But I just think this is a really great diagram of all the different components. Um, right here, you can see uh, more of those articulator structures. And then we get into more of the internal structures as well as the larynx as well as the muscles and another great diagram of the vocal folds. 
And so in this next slide, um, we have a, a video of what is called stroboscopy. And stroboscopy is a camera that a laryngologist would use. So when you are having a voice difficulty, um, as I'll speak about in a moment, um, the first thing I would suggest doing is going to a otolaryngologist or a laryngologist. And they are a specialized medical doctor or specialized type of ENT who focuses specifically on the larynx and the related structures in the throat. And so they'll deal with different kinds of issues such as voice, hoarseness, vocal fold uh, disorders, voice loss, and uh, throat cancer as well. Um, and so they also work often with patients who rely on work, on their voices for work. Uh, we call them occupational or professional voice users, including singers, public speakers, some podcasters, um, and they manage a, a complex amount of different voice disorders. And so on this video, you'll see this camera known as a strobe. And the strobe is a specialized camera. And so believe it or not, our voice uh, vibrates at uh, thousands, uh, thousands and thousands of times per uh, millisecond. And so in this video, you're actually only seeing um, a slight, a, a fraction of a millisecond of the folds vibrating, and that's in a very slow motion. And it really gives uh, the laryngologist a really good diagnostic uh, baseline framework of how the vocal folds are vibrating, if there is dysphonia present, or if there are other uh, vocal uh, difficulties occurring as well, uh, such as even dehydration can be seen through this camera. Um, and so it's a really important and essential diagnostic tool. And um, that's a great video of that really two great, uh, two great healthy vocal folds. And so as I said before, the first course of action, if you are having persistent voice concerns, is seeing a specialist. And so if you're noticing voice difficulty for more than two weeks, that's including that roughness, it can be strain. Um, some people notice there's more strangled sound um, as well as overall hoarseness, um, go to a laryngologist. And so if there is a voice disorder present, there is uh, different types of courses of action that the laryngologist may take, but one of them would be recommending that you go to see someone like me and go to voice therapy.